Welcome to the shop. Well, today I'm out in the wood shop and I'm gonna be cutting up some wood pieces to go along with the metal pieces I made in the last video and following along with my uh, philosophical conundrum that I've been dealing with, I'm trying to decide how much of the process do I show. I'm kind of not showing everything. I'm showing maybe little bits and pieces here of things that, that might be interesting. I've made some, I cut some uh, pieces of hardwood. This is Paduk, and I cut them on the table saw. And table saws aren't that interesting. Um, I think anybody probably could figure out how a table saw works, and so I'm not showing every single detail. But I am going to show a little bit about how I do the glue up and how I do this uh, segmented design. So I'm going to move the camera and kind of show the, the piece of paper that I have printed and what I'm starting to make here. This is a, a really common trick that I use for a lot of things, and that is to do a CAD drawing and then print on a printer that I know to be moderately accurate. For woodworking, you don't have to hold thousands, and laser printer accuracy is close enough. It's actually surprisingly excellent for a lot of things. So I've drawn the diagram of how the pieces will fit, and then I'm starting to cut some of the pieces and it's going to be a, an arrangement of light and dark pieces um, all the way around and then this will be glued to a one inch piece of MDF and then put on the CNC router and it will be routed out into what I hope is a very cool shape. And so I'm going to move the camera again and show the setup on the chop saw, which isn't that horribly interesting, but I don't know, maybe a little. So I've got a, a fairly standard DeWalt chop saw here, and I made a, a very crude little alignment guide with a couple of pieces of MDF clamped into place and then a guideline so I can figure out uh, where to approximately cut these pieces. The chop saw is accurate, but for the work I'm doing, it's not quite accurate enough. And so the, I'm gonna consider this to be the rough cut, and then I'm gonna touch it up on the disc sander using a very precise angle fence and uh, a fairly carefully set up disc sander with a fresh disc kind of hard to figure out where to put the camera because when using the chop saw, hands and arms get in the way, but hopefully you can see a little bit of this. I start off by cutting one end on the saw. Then turn it over and look at my alignment mark. and then cut off the other end. And the cut is actually quite good. And I may not need to do the touch up on the sander, but hey, it's easy. I've got the sander nearby and it always helps to make it just a little bit better. So I'm gonna run the rest of these and then head over to the sander. Now I've moved over to the disc sander and I'm showing how I set up the table on the disc sander with a precision machinist square to get the table square to the disc. Uh, for those that don't know, a disc sander can be a very, very accurate woodworking tool and especially when combined with a highly accurate miter gauge can produce uh, near metalworking tolerances. It's kind of surprising. Um, also, wood has kind of gotten the reputation for being a, a kind of a sloppy material to work with. Close enough is good enough. We use the big marks on the ruler, but with a little bit of care and proper technique, it's possible to do woodwork within thousandths you know, not one thousandth, but you can, you can actually do quite precise woodwork. And one of the tools that is a very useful tool for precision woodwork is the disc sander. 
I thought it was something to mention about the disc sander since I'm primarily, I use the shop as a metalworking shop, a machine shop. I do uh, grind a lot of metal on the disc sander. And once you grind metal on a, on a disc, it becomes pretty useless for wood. It'll just burn the wood, burnish the wood and burn it. So I just put a new uh, clean disc on the uh, on the sander for doing the woodwork and then uh, I'm gonna see if I can do all the woodwork that I'm planning to do in the near future before switching back to metal. Some of the guys that make knives and use uh, belt grinders have a separate set of belts. Okay, here's the belts that I use for wood, here's the belts I use for metal. So I'm gonna move the camera again. I'm using a precision miter gauge because the miter gauge that comes with the sander is, it's okay, but it's not as good as I'd like it to be. This one actually has a vernier scale on it, so you can uh, actually uh, use it for doing fractions of a degree. I happen to need precisely 30 degrees, and so it's got a nice little serrated detent and a pointer that, that lines up with the 30 degrees. And so I'm going to do just the final little bit of touch-up on these pieces to just get that uh, angle just a little bit better. Probably it was okay um, as it came off the saw because the saw is a, is a high-quality saw with a high-quality sharp blade. But hey, might as well just give it that extra little bit. going to measure, make sure that I'm hitting my target dimension. And there we go. So I'm going to run the rest of them, turn off the camera, and then turn the camera back on for the glue up. This is how the pieces all line up and they match the drawing perfectly so all the dimensions are correct and it looks like it's going to be a, a kind of a nice pattern once it's finished. So I'm going to go get the glue bottle and the band clamp and I'm not sure how much, how interesting it's going to be to actually watch me do the gluing because hands get in the way and you know, it's just glue but maybe I'll just glue it and then show the result when it's done. So I'm going to be using one of these band clamps. This one happens to be made by Bessie. It's, I think it's a German company. And I've kind of pre-sized it to more or less fit the outside perimeter of what it is that I'm doing. And don't need to glue it to the paper. This is an adaptation of a method used by wood turners called segmented turning. And some of the projects that the guys make with the segmented approach are quite excellent. This, this approach can make some very, very interesting stuff. So now, See if I can get the band clamp on without distorting things too much. One of the problems with doing glue ups, glue is a lubricant. Before it sticks, it slides. 
And so it's kind of necessary to do a little bit of fingular alignment here. Make sure everything is flat. Make sure everything is in the proper plane. And that, I believe, is going to be a successful glue-up. So the next step, I'm going to glue it to a piece of one-inch MDF, um, according to the template, because the template has marked on it where the zero point is, and the router needs to know where zero is when it cuts the pattern. And yes, the, the pattern is a little bit oversized, so I don't have to nail it within a thousandth. But uh, next operation will be to stick it to a piece of MDF, take it over to the router and route the profile. And I'm probably not going to show any of that. And the next time the camera is turned on, we'll be at the router. So see you later. OK, the piece has been successfully glued up and has been glued to a uh, support structure of one inch MDF. And over here, I've got the piece in place. Uh, the way that I fasten things to the router table, the table has a number of half inch holes drilled in a, a rectangular pattern. And then I use wedges and blocks with pins in them to lock the piece in place. And this holds really surprisingly well. So now I have the glued up ring in place on a one inch MDF support. I've got the uh, tool length has been measured for the various tools I'm using. And the zero point has been set to the surface of the MDF and this corner. And this is the first time that I've run the program, so I'm going to be really careful because, you know, first time running a program is always scary, but it has been simulated. And I've got at least moderate confidence that it's going to work, so. OK, I'm now using the automatic tool changer to change to tool number one, which it does successfully. I'm running in single step mode, so I'm going to be checking things one step at a time. Now this looks very much like where it should be going to to start the process. Okay, so it says 4.893Z, and yes, that looks reasonable. Once again, double check, cross check, cross check, double check, again and again and again. So, and It's back to the CAD room. I have no spindle speed. The CAD program that I use has some quirks. And even though I supposedly have a spindle speed configured for that cutter, sometimes the, the program just gets a little confused and kind of forgets. So. Still in single block mode. Twenty five thousand RPM, half inch solid carbide router bit. Got the e-stop button in my hand. It's looking like the cut appears to be 
reasonable. And so I'm going to be doing a roughing pass here using this uh, uh, regular router bit with sharp corners. And then the finishing pass will be done with a round nose bit. In the, the previous sculpture that I did, I tried doing the whole thing just with a finish pass. And it kind of worked, but I think the roughing pass, it takes a little longer time, but I think it actually does produce a bit of a benefit. So here goes. This is looking entirely reasonable. I don't have a dust collection system, so I'm going to kind of be holding the hose. And this really doesn't collect very much dust at all. It does help a tiny bit. The larger particles that are being ejected really aren't that much of a problem. I can clean them up. What I'm trying to do with the vacuum is to control some of the really fine airborne dust. When I first got the CNC router, I actually built a fairly serious dust collection system for it. And after using it for a while, I kind of came to the conclusion that it really wasn't worth the effort. That I do such a variety of odd shaped pieces, I was always running into trouble where the dust collector didn't work, didn't fit, got in the way, reduced visibility. I think a lot of woodworkers that do kind of more uniform stuff, more like uh, panel kind of stuff, probably have better results with dust collection. But for me, I just finally took it off because it really was more of a impediment than a useful tool. I'm running at 100 inches per minute, and I could possibly go faster, but this machine, it's a, a, a large gantry-style router, and it's not super rigid, and even though it probably will go faster, when it goes faster, it starts getting a little more out of control. So I haven't really done 
a serious series of tests to determine what is the fastest I can run it and still get acceptable results. So I'm just being kind of conservative. I thought about trying to design a, a dust collector that works better for the work I do, but too many ideas, too little time. I don't do enough woodwork to make it a priority. But who knows, never say never. Once again, because this is a one-off, I'm using a fairly conservative program, <coughs> a fairly conservative uh, speed, depth of cut, and if I was producing a hundred of these, I'd probably optimize it a little bit more to make it go a little faster, but when only doing a one-off, I think I'd rather have one successful part than end up having to waste a part because I was being too aggressive. And that's my machining philosophy in general that one-offs are always a little slower, a little more conservative. As I get to the finishing step, I may end up just fast-forwarding the video because the finishing step really does take a long time. And After you've seen a bit of it, the rest of it probably isn't that much more interesting. But then again, it's hard to really say what people think is interesting. Everything appears to be going extremely well. It's looking like the result I want. Got my hand on the e-stop button. 
doing a tool change here, going over to tool number two. This is the round nose, the half inch round nose cutter to be doing the finishing operation. So that completes the ring. It came out really, really nice. It's almost exactly what I expected it would look like. And uh, the next step is going to be to use the bandsaw to cut the piece off of its support and then do a little sanding and epoxy it onto the aluminum frame. Of course, I have to make another one just like it to put on the other side of the frame. I'm not going to show the epoxying and I'm not going to show the uh, spray painting because it's not that interesting and I've shown it before. So the next video will be the analysis and conclusion where I show how the final result came out. So as always, thank you for watching. It's been fun. <laughs>